Hello and welcome everyone, Michael here from Atavism Team. Today in quick tutorial I'll show you how to create a custom Atavism server installation. So we'll build a server basing on Ubuntu 18.04 server edition. We'll install Java, the MySQL, some additional packages that will help us uh, in configuration of system. At the end of this part, we'll also upload and configure Atavism server files. Okay, so to begin with, we'll build our virtual machine. To do this, we can use a public cloud, either the Amazon, Azure or any other provider, or we can use our, uh, in my case, it will be VirtualBox to create a new server. So to start, I'll just call it uh, Ubuntu. And we'll go next. Just to speed up installation process, I'll add four gigs of RAM to this virtual machine but it will be perfectly fine with the two gigs of RAM. If you're using 64-bit version operating system, it will be recommended to have at least uh, two gigs of RAM for the initial stage. We'll create a new hard drive. We'll use just default uh, VirtualBox disk image as format. We'll also use a dynamic allocation, so that means the system will allocate this uh, space to this virtual machine on need base, so it doesn't consume straight away all the space. And we'll give it 20 gigs. I'll just start this on my uh, local drive. Okay, so the initial setup of this uh, virtual machine in a uh, VirtualBox it's done, but we need to modify and change mainly the CPU just to speed up the installation process and also change the uh, network configuration. So we'll go to settings, we'll go to system and we'll add here, I'll say four CPUs, we'll do the trick, storage, we need to insert the uh, ISO, I already download the Ubuntu server from Ubuntu website and also when you select your hard drive, your new virtual hard drive, if you're starting this virtual machine on the SSD drive it is handy just to tick this box that will just optimize this uh, system. The next one audio, we don't need audio as it's GUI less system and uh, one of the most important part is the network. I'll do this in a bridged adapter as that's the way how I would prefer to do this. And you need to select if you have multiple network cards like I have you need to select the card that have access to your local network and it will also need to have access to internet. And that's the end of this configuration. So I'll just start uh, and we'll start the installation of the Ubuntu. It will take just a moment. It is a initial boot, so uh, like you see, we are there. Okay, so we have language to select. In my case, I will just select English, but I will change the layout of my keyboard to English UK. And we'll install Ubuntu. Now we'll modify the uh, network card settings. I'll assign static IP address the subnet. 
to check what is our subnet we can go and run in Windows 10 or any Windows CMD it's a command prompt and just type there IP config and like you can see here that's my IP address on local network subnet mask this subnet mask could be read as slash 24 and my gateway so I just know that I can't use this IP address as it is already assigned to my computer and it is preferred to just don't use any other IP address that it's in use by any other device because there will be IP config conflict okay so I'll assign IP address 192.168.254.105 but first of all we need to provide a subnet information so it's zero slash 24 now I need to assign this IP address so it's 105 I'll use the same gateway on my uh, desktop have and the name servers will need them to resolve uh, domains so. uh, it is nice to have more than one just in case there will be some communication problem and we'll, we can save changes We don't use proxy in my case, and we'll use entire drive. And that's it. I'm happy with this. Okay, so when the system starting installing packages, we can now create a new user. I'll call this JS Atavism. Here we also need to give this server name, so I'll also call this Atavism. And then they pick the username. It is a username that will be used to log into the server. It must be in lower cases. And uh, we need to select a password. And we're just waiting now for the system to finish uh, installation. Okay, so I have all the scripts or actually all the commands that are needed in my text document that will be available for everybody, everyone, just to nearly copy and paste. So after we install the operating system, that should finish in a moment, we'll just update the, sorry, we'll first of all create a user called root. Uh, to create this user so we literally just need to set up password for this user then we'll just run command just to read the repository packages lists and we'll install packages that are needed for us to to perform the installation of the server or and configuration so it will be unzip to unzip the server Atavism server files. MC, it's a old, well, it's not old. It's if somebody used in the past Midnight Commander, then it's this uh, software. In Windows, uh, the equivalent of that was either the DOS Navigator or Northern Commander. The HTOP, it is just more friendly displaying information about uh, your system, CPU usage, RAM usage. MySQL and then Java but like we can see now the, the installation is completed so we can just reboot the server now the initial start it's slightly longer but later on it will be literally a few seconds to restart the server like you can see the system is running now now to make my life easier 
uh, I will use a putty and on a putty I'll just enter the IP address of this new virtual machine and we'll connect it. Now it will take a moment just to read the SSH keys. say yes that we'll just... okay so we need to log in to log in we'll use the user that we created just a moment ago well, you can see here there is a few packages to update but we'll do this as one of the last steps okay so first of all we'll create a root user by running this command sudo pass wd and then root and the system will ask us initially for the current user password and now the next question is to create a new password for the root user the password was updated successfully so now I log in to run all this command as the root or super user so we'll just type there su and press enter and we'll need to put on the password that we just created a moment ago for the root user okay so the next part is to run this command apt hyphen get update it will just read the repository list next part will and that will take some time we'll just download and install a few packages like I mentioned earlier on zip MC so it's midnight commander htop mysql server and Java parameter minus y it mean uh, that you agree to install all these packages and uh, and additional packages that are needed for these uh, packages that we selected there after we're finishing installing these uh, packages we'll run initial database configuration And there we'll just create a root, the MySQL root password, and also delete some uh, anonymous access, delete a test uh, databases. Okay, so installation finished. Now we can just copy and paste this command. And yes, we'll like to start using the password for the super user. I'll recommend to use at least a medium level for securing the database access. And I'll just create a password. Happy with that. Remove anonymous users, yes. And well, we can disallow access uh, for root from the remote computers as we will create in a moment a additional user. So yes, we'll just so we'll just uh, select yes. And we'll also here remove the test database and we need to reload the privileges. Okay, so this part is done. 
next part is we'll need to modify uh, my SQL configuration file especially if there is a line where we need to allow access to this database from the external IPs so to do so I could use either the purely command line and use the nano program but some users have problem with that so we'll use a midnight commander and midnight commander editor so we'll type there mc press enter and now we need to go to this uh, location etc my sql and it is this configuration file that we need to modify now first time when you starting the mc and you would like to edit something using the fr key you need to select a editor engine or edit editing program I will recommend to use a MC editor so in this case it will be number three but this place could change for example if you don't have nano or Vim okay so we're getting we can now go to bin address and that's the place where we need to change this address to be 0, .0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 for example that means you can connect from any IP address press F2 to save and the pop-up window to save is there so we'll press enter and twice escape okay we modify this but later on we'll need to restart MySQL I'll use the also the update part to just restart the server in one go so I don't do this now okay so in the next part we need to create a new database user now to cl close uh, midnight commander we'll just press F10 and we'll use this simply command to connect to the database my SQL minus U I mean user in this case we need to specify the user that it's root and minus P for password and now we need to enter the password that we created just a moment ago in for the MySQL and we are there we'll create user and it's called Atavism and it will be able to log in from any IP address and it will be identified by this password that was successful so in the next part we need to grant the privileges to these users so copy and paste and also there were some issues with the newer version of the mysql that stops supporting uh, date in format of 0000 as year so this one will correct that okay so the mysql creating and configuration it's finished so we can quit here Now we'll also check do we have Java installed there? It was it's supposed to be installed as part of the initial software mm -hmm. installation. We'll just see what version it is. It is uh, Java 8. So we're fine. Currently Java 9 is not supported. Okay, so we have this one. Now this step is optional 
this a drivers for the virtual machine obviously if you're doing this on a public cloud um, for example they will use a VMware or any other system they could have own drivers so you can install this on the virtual box that's the commands that are needed but for the VMware for example it will be just this uh, tool that we'll need to install Okay, but I'll skip this as we don't need that. The next part, especially when you starting using the public cloud, is setting up firewall. And on the firewall, we need to allow access to these parts to make Atavis work correctly, basically without the opening these uh, parts, uh, Atavis done will run. So again, we'll just copy and paste some commands. Uh, I'd have some looking for the TCP and UDP parts and protocols, so we need to do that. Now, if we have just single part, we don't need to specify is the TCP or UDP. It will just accept both. But that just in, in situation when you have just single part. If you have a part range, you need to specify and create rules for both of them. Okay. So the next part, it's actually we did that. So we also need to allow connection from, well, we don't need to, but it will be recommended to just grant access using the part 222. <coughs> it will be used later on to upload the server files. And also we need to allow access to the database. Uh, if you're doing this on your local network, you can allow access from any IP address if you're doing this on public cloud it is highly recommended to to use just a static IP address or IP ranges <coughs> from which one people will connect but in my case we're doing this on local network and the firewall will block connection from outside world to this uh, to the server so we'll allow part 3306 and here we can specify if we want to just allow connection on using the TCP we can just specify TCP okay so we have firewall set up now we have rules but we need to actually enable the firewall so it is just simply command uh, UFW enable. Now we'll get prompt that we could lose connection, but we are okay because we set up the rule here to allow connection. So the part will be open. Okay. So this part is finished. Now what we need to do, we need to upload the Atavis server files to this new virtual machine for that I'll use a WinSCP we already create a connection but you need to ensure that it will be SFTP there will be your part number sorry IP address of the host and also the part number 22 unless you modify this then if you modify the parts you will need to know what part it is you need to log into server using the initial user in my case it was atavism and i need to upload the atavism server files that I download from my A panel and 
and for now that's all from this uh, using the WinSCP okay so now we are on the we're back on putty and we'll just if you didn't move from your home directory you can do just ls and see that there is a new Atavis server file I will copy to the different directory so we'll do cp and we'll now go there so cd we'll do the ls to list and the file is there so now we need to unzip it and it's quite simply command unzip and then the file name the unzip it's very fast okay so the next part we need to import the SQL structure files to the database engine and to do so we'll go to the to the extracted uh, folders now we can see that there is created at heavy underscore server so we'll go there okay so we're inside now we can go again to midnight commander that will make our life slightly easier here is the SQL server we'll select the new installation with demo data okay so we have all we need to import all these four files and to don't close the midnight commander but get access to the command prompt we can just press ctrl o not zero it's o and here we can list these files again so the far files are here okay so we'll run now this again this it's simply commands that will insert the, these uh, files to the database engine This is a quick process. The biggest file it's the uh, word content.sql. Let's take just slightly longer. But it's done. <coughs> okay, so the next step is to modify uh two configuration files like i mentioned earlier we didn't close the midnight commander which is kind of minimize it or put on in background so again to bring it back we'll just press ctrl o and we'll go up to the bin directory and here we'll need to con modify this out.properties and here we'll just specify the the address there are two options we can use the public ip address or your private ip address will redirect you to from the public one or you can use also the fully qualified domain name that it will be more often used when you will just uh, prepare to some tests but in my case just to show you i'll use the fully qualified domain name i have domain that i created i don't have static ip address here and uh, to to just automatically update uh, my ip address i use uh, one of uh, many dns uh, providers and my domain is uh, at dns info and we'll just uh, 
will just perform some tests I tested earlier on, but and we're getting a response, and that is currently my IP address. Most likely it will change on the next day. But this one will give me option to connect from outside my home or from inside also. Okay, so we have this uh, uh, address uh, specified there. We need to just modify the username for the database. And obviously the password. And the database uh, host name is it's quite specific if you're running everything on one server then you can leave the local host name local host but if your database it's in, on a different server obviously you need to specify the address of this uh, server but in in this case it is on this local server so we'll just press again F2 to save and escape. Okay, so we have out the properties done. So we are here. And now the next one is word.properties. Here we need to specify a our address and they put on the license key and the license key now you don't see the license key obviously as it is life uh, key there and again we need to put on a Tavism login bin address and we also need to specify the proxy address that it's also and last step here will be just to specify lower the database connection Again, the server it's the local host server so I will ch save this without any changes again press F2 save and escape now when you running your server on your local network Obviously, the system doesn't resolve uh, this, uh, or it will resolve, but to public IP address. So to slightly cheat the system, so we need to uh, modify a host file on both uh, the server and also on your kind of local computer on your desktop. So here we need to put on the we need to put on here IP address of this server and specify the domain okay so this part is done it happening only because uh, 
our server don't have public IP address. If your server have public IP address, you don't need to do this. Or at least you shouldn't. Okay, so the server configuration is done. And based on that, we can start our uh, two servers, so authentication and word server. Now we'll just do the control O and I'll clear all this information. In my case, I have these two green uh, files that I need to run. Minus. The last parameters on this command is start or stop. So first of all, we'll start the authentication server. And like you can see the it was uh, starting successfully. Now it will take some time to do some initialization, but we can go and start a second. So it's the word. moment and the system starting it's running fine but what we forget to do is to uh, restart server to just uh, allow connection to the database from the uh, from the external IP addresses so before we do that, before restarting, we'll stop the servers. To stop them, we'll use the same, nearly the same command well, to start. Just stop. Now, it is quite important also to keep your server updated. Mm -hmm. So as part of this process, we'll run just a command to all the packages that are not that secure since the initial release of this operating system. But you can see here there's quite a few programs that need to be updated. Now, when the system updating, we'll go and we'll modify the, the host file on our Windows computer that will be used to connect to the database and eventually to play. The file itself is located in C called Windows System32 drivers etc. make my life easier just copy and paste and you need to modify this file I already have opened this file so I'll really actually I'll modify one of the entries that I have Okay, so what this doing is also my computer now will also resolve to the local IP address of this server. So we don't need to go outside the world and come back. Just press save it. Sometimes you will get a pop up. That's because the modification of this file must be run with the higher privileges. So you need to run this as an administrator. In my case, I'm already doing that. So like you can see in the past, it was pointing to the different IP address. 
I'll just ping in now again. And it's using my internal IP address. So this uh, modification of this host file on Windows also work. You will need to do this on all the computers that connect into this uh, to the database and to the to the play. Obviously, if there is more than one user that working on it on this project, so we're nearly there. But I'll just show you that. Our wiki also contain all this information that are needed. And in second video, I'll create instruction how to prepare a project to work with Atavism. But that's on the next video that will come soon. Okay, but uh, in the meantime, the system was updated. Just to finalize all these updates, we need to restart the server. We'll just run command reboot. We're getting a prompt that the server just lose connection or put a loose connection to server. And we can see on our virtual box window that the system was restarted. So they, after our initial start, the restart is quite quick. So I'll just close Putty because I don't need it anymore. And here we'll just log into the server. Using the console, we can directly log in as root. And like you can see here, there is no updates needed. Everything is updated. So we can go just to our Director will restart our Atavis server. Oh, yes, CD. And here we'll just again run these two programs. So authentication server and the word server. And we'll run the same command, nearly the same command with a different script. And also our word server start. So I'm happy with the installation and that will conclude the the this part of the of your journey with Atavism. Thank you for watching and hope so you'll enjoy working with Atavism.